appeal to these values in their messages, so the cultural values. Um, so they will, so in their message, so they will see their product or idea as a means of achieving important cultural values. So if ever you are trying to persuade somebody anything, whether to go to a particular site, uh, an attraction, or to uh, buy a product or whatever, you and your product and your place, whatever, is all about achievement, success, efficiency and practicality, progress, freedom and equality, individualism, effort and opportun optimism. By the way, optimism is also bad. Did you know that? But pessimism actually is better. Read up on it. Okay. And cultural behaviors. Uh, it's like air. Culture is like air. We don't realize we're breathing it. That's a good point. But it uh, is constantly around us. Uh, there are seven cultural forces. Insistence on choice. We want choice. Pursuit of impossible dreams. Yeah. Obsession with big and more. Impatience with time. Acceptance of mistakes. Urge to improvise. Fixation on what's new. It's new. It's new. I gotta have it. New and improved. And this impacts how we behave. So persuaders also uh, do that. They constantly give us more choices, even though we really don't. We have too many choices these days, particularly in our gym. Yeah. Um, so I think both of those are really important, just so you know that these these sort of cultural values and these cultural behaviors are things that are tied to the dominant culture and have been sort of uh, instigated or created or crafted through our discursive formations through cultural products and, and all of that type of stuff and it impacts how we see the world how we uh, what we believe what we value how we behave and so as persuaders we can use all that stuff as persuadees we need to be critical of all that type of stuff and then they talk about hegemony and patriarchy and again I'll let you see other stuff for that but I mean a lot of this stuff is more theoretical than anything else but the larger idea is I think um, we we live in this culture, whatever the culture is, we, we have language, visuals, whatever that crafts a certain way of looking at things, and that stuff is used constantly to sustain itself, to maintain culture for, for certain people to, you know, out conscious intent or not, to maintain power. Um, there are lots of people who are scared about losing power. Uh, we are a very diverse culture. We didn't always used to be as diverse as we are. This scares people. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. Um, so, so people try to sustain certain traditional uh, values and things like that. Um, but in any case, um, we should be very critical of ideas, language uh, that op oppresses other people. Um, or sustain certain ideas that inherently oppress other people. Uh, we should fight against racism, we should fight against sexism, we should fight against you know any sort of uh, oppression, discrimination, what have you. But a lot of this racism, discrimination, sexism, whatever, is rooted in the language and the communication and the persuasive patterns of our culture. So that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Good luck. That's all I had to say about that. Run, Jen. Hey, Ron. That's terrible. Okay. Um, enjoy uh, your weekend. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. This is okay. Yeah. So, so one of the biggest things is consumer culture stuff, and that's problematic. But I always want to buy, 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 buy. Is that instinct or in pieces of the block? Um. And so the last thing in this is really about consumer culture and how we always want to buy stuff to make us feel better about ourselves instead of actually, you know, uh, trying to make ourselves feel better by doing things that are good for us. Um, and the whole multiculturalism stuff is, is important, but this is like intercultural communication stuff, I think you should read that. Um, we have become a consumer culture, argues many theorists. T.J. Jackson Lears explained that around the turn of the 20th century, blah, blah, blah. Uh, coupled with marketing and advertising, established self-realization as a dominant cultural belief. And that is, we buy stuff. We contribute to the buyer's physical, uh, advertisers promise their products, we contribute to the buyer's physical, psychic, or social well-being. If you buy this shirt, you will feel better. Tommy Hilfiger, follow the flock. They, they sold style. 
I've tried promoting feeling rather than information. Both we are. Uh, in any case, I'll let you read that. Um, but we have like clothing from Gap is more value than clothing from Kmart. But I like my Kmart underwear. Uh, da, 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 da. And of course, Gap is the same people own Banana Republic, same people own Old Navy. We have a little hierarchy there. The thing is that a lot of people argue that we should transform this consumer culture because you know we are all we are more than what we buy. And so I found this. I thought it was pretty cool. If it comes up, Does it come up. Oh, there we are. Essentialkids.com. If it comes up, basically it's just ideas on how, if you're raising a kid or whatever, how to try to teach that kid to not be or to be a critical consumer. We buy kids lots of stuff. We buy their love. I know that's what I do with my niece. <laughs> I love you so much. I bought you this thing. Um, this is not coming up. But it has some really good ideas on what to do if you want to combat consumer culture. Uh, I, I'm going to end this because I'm going to go buy something. Take care.